Ready? At the point that it was getting to, I, I wasn't surprised that something bad happened. This is a $23 billion industry. They sent her home in a box. If she was that sick, why didn't I know? After my face was paralyzed, and I was just like so confused, like why are they doing this to me? In America's mountain wilderness, outposts of a multi-billion dollar business operate beyond the public glare. This complex is one of hundreds of treatment centers across America for so-called troubled teens. Children with all manner of issues, from bad behavior, to video game addiction, to severe depression, are sent to what is essentially a boarding school for the unruly. Some stay for months or even years. Our goal is to help these students become the best versions of themselves. Desperate parents struggling with difficult children, allured in by the promise that their problems can be fixed with a mix of therapy and tough love. But this is an industry plagued by stories of neglect, abuse, and even death. We fly to the upper room. I never thought I would have to bury my child. I mean, I wasn't even there for, I didn't even, I got told too late to even be there for her. Dean's daughter, Taylor, loved animals and trips to Disney World with her siblings. But she began to struggle with what her father calls emotional issues. She left their home in Washington to attend Diamond Ranch Academy, a troubled teen school in Utah. By last December, after 15 months there, she was dead. The cause of death hasn't yet been determined, but Taylor's family believes she had sepsis, a blood infection which is the body's extreme reaction to infection. Her dad doesn't even know where or why she died. I never got anything about her going to the doctor. If she was that sick. Why didn't you know? Why didn't I know? And they should have told me something. I would imagine you never expect to send your child to what's supposed to be a reputable educational facility and not get them back. No, they sent her home in a box. I mean, I still think one of these days she's just gonna walk in the door. It's not gonna happen. School medical records obtained by Sky News suggest Taylor was vomiting regularly in the days before she died. One staff note says Taylor was angry because she felt like staff weren't trying to help with her being sick lately. Dean, do you think this whole industry needs reform across the board? Oh, 100%. They look at our children as paychecks. The 12-ish plus thousand dollars a month. Taylor's just gonna be really missed. Losing her devastated our family, our whole community. And I said Taylor was, I mean, Taylor was loved. They told all the students this morning. Um, Listen to how staff were told of Taylor's death. This is a covert audio recording of a director breaking the news, provided to me by a whistleblower. Unfortunately, like for me, this is the first time I've had to deal with this. Probably won't be the last, depending on how long I stay here. Because Taylor's death isn't an isolated case. In Utah alone, three children have died in the past two years at residential facilities. Scores more allege physical and emotional abuse. I'm on a journey from the capital Salt Lake City into the rugged depths of this state. There are more than 100 troubled teen schools in Utah. Most are privately run and often charge between ten dollars and $15,000 a month for each child. Some teenagers tell of being made to hike for hours with bags filled with rocks and being deprived of food and sleep. For many, their experience of this industry begins in the pitch black with a so-called authorised kidnapping. Parents pay for their children to be taken from home and transported to facilities sometimes thousands of miles away and even restrained with handcuffs or cable ties. Strangers go into teenagers' bedrooms in the middle of the night, take them often from their beds, bundle them into the back of vans and drive them down dark roads like this to these camps in the middle of nowhere. It really is hard to believe that this is legal. They're completely cut off. 
when they show up in the middle of the night and I've been there and the first thing they ask is, where am I? The one kid asked, where am I? It's like, dude, you're in Utah. Matt was a night watch attendant at Diamond Ranch Academy where Taylor Goodridge died. He says he encountered multiple instances of physical confrontations at the campus. I felt like every day I was coming, to, coming in and there was new holes in the wall. The body size hole here, fist size hole there, head size hole there. Some of the kids do it. Sometimes it's from the staff members putting the kids into the wall. How cut off are these kids from the outside world when they're in these schools, residential centres? If they tried to mail a letter off to their parents, it would get sent back with corrections on it. You can't say this, you can't say that. And so they're, even their letters were getting, I guess, redacted basically, so that certain information wasn't leaving the school. What was Diamond Ranch like from your experience? What was it like in the way that they cared for the children in their custody? At the point that it was getting to, I, I wasn't surprised that something bad happened. Mm -hmm. I just was getting a feeling. I was getting more and more uncomfortable, on, even on the boys' campus, with them not being taken care of. I was overworking myself. I was working six, seven days a week because I honestly didn't trust anybody else with my group of kids. So this is you at Diamond Ranch, yeah. yeah. Shay Renner was sent to Diamond Ranch for several months in 2015 because of behavioural problems. Speaking publicly about her experiences there for the first time, she claims staff would terrorise her on a weekly basis. Were you surprised, Shay, when you heard what happened to Taylor there? Um, not at all. Just that, like... If more people knew, like, she could still be here, yeah, like, if I knew, like, my rights mm -hmm. and did something sooner, like, who knows? Shay Renner alleges staff would physically restrain her, not as a legitimate practice, but as a form of punishment. She suffered partial facial paralysis after being held down on the ground. My feet were taken from underneath me and I was dropped to the floor and they started doing the pressure points and I was dropped down again for the second time. And that time, instead of just doing the, these pressure points, they went onto my face and um, after a while, uh, they released me and I could feel like my face, there was something funny with my face. These pictures show her face before and after the incident. I felt really like trapped and I felt a lot, a lot of things felt hopeless and helpless. Um, I remember like after my face was paralyzed, um, I was sitting in front of my counselor and I was just like so confused, like why are they doing this to me? Hi there, we're from Sky News, UK television station. Nobody at Diamond Ranch would speak officially about these allegations, but as we were filming, Riley Diaz, a director there whose family owns the facility, emerges from the building. Are, are children safe coming here? Can, I, can you answer that though? That's the most basic question, isn't it? Are children safe coming to Diamond Ranch? Have you gone onto our website? Yeah. I've seen your videos, but it it's conflicts with what we're being told about what happens here. We will absolutely speak to anything and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're very transparent. You're saying you're transparent, but what's not transparent is how Taylor Goodridge died. Her dad says he doesn't even know whether she died here or died at the hospital, or, you know, he doesn't even know the answer to, for, for, for a parent who's in such profound pain to not know whether his daughter died here, died at hospital whether she was, you know, he thinks her sickness was ignored by staff and... I just can't say anything. You can't answer those I can't, questions. I can't say anything. I can't say anything. In a statement, a spokesperson for Diamond Ranch Academy says we're unable to reply to specific allegations relating to specific students due to the operation of various federal and state laws. Diamond Ranch Academy is contesting the allegations in the appropriate venues and will present evidence in court as opposed to the media. Taylor's death has prompted fresh calls for major reform of this industry by people who say that these residential facilities are putting profit 
over child welfare. There's Paris. Here we are at Paris's school. Leading the charge is Paris Hilton. She spent time in three troubled teen facilities. For nearly a year, aged 16, she was here at Provo Canyon School in the foothills of Utah's Wasatch Mountains. Paris says she was verbally, physically and sexually abused. We'll prep posters. Together with Rebecca, a manager at her company, they push for reform of the troubled teen industry. We are approached every single day with survivors of this industry who are coming out of these particular programs and stating that they too have been abused. Paris alleges she was woken in the middle of the night and forced to undergo sham gynecological exams. Others who went to Provo claim they were force-fed medication and held in solitary confinement for 20 hours a day. In response to the allegations, Provo Canyon's owners say the school was sold in 2000 and they cannot comment on the operations or student experience prior to that time. But they do say they don't condone or promote any form of abuse. I don't feel you can look at this industry without looking at the profit motivations of it. So we've calculated that this is a $23 billion industry and they're treating around 200 to 300,000 kids annually. And so these facilities are incentivized to keep kids longer, to bill for services, and obviously the list goes on and on. At Utah's state capital, Senator Mike McKell is working on national laws to protect children in troubled teen schools. He wants to regulate the secure transportation industry, known for those authorised kidnappings. Kids that are picked up in the middle of the night by two large men. But when you start treatment with that level of trauma, I think it's extremely problematic. If I'm king for the day, I ban it entirely. I, I just don't think. I think the amount of damage we're doing versus the amount of good we're, we're, we're creating, I think the damage far outweighs the good. I've got kids, would I send my kids to a, to a facility? Not a chance, I would never, I would never do that based on what, what I've seen. Many of the troubled teen graduates I've spoken to describe a system which has done more to harm than help. Taylor Goodridge's family will never know what she might have done with her life. Instead, they're left with two boxes of her belongings returned from Diamond Ranch, a graduation medal and letters from her peers. It is little comfort, but they hope her tragic death will result in the school being shut down. They want more accountability too, of an industry which takes in the most vulnerable, but has for too long operated unchecked. Martha Kellner, Sky News, Utah. Well, we've had a response to Martha's report from Utah's Health and Human Services Department, who've given us this statement. Residential programs are a critical part of Utah's mental health system and continuum, and the health and safety of the vulnerable populations they serve must be their highest priority. We want to make sure all Utah licensed providers are in full compliance with the rules to ensure the safety of those they serve.